In this episode, let's have a listen to the Samson CO2, which is a small diaphragm condenser microphone with a cardioid to super cardioid pickup pattern, great for booming for indoor dialogue. Last year, we took a look at some of the best types of microphones you can use for booming indoors for dialogue. And this is especially relevant in cases where you're recording in a room that might be a little bit more reverberant or have a little bit more echo. And we ended up kind of finding that shotgun microphones may not be the best choice for those types of circumstances. And instead, a cardioid, a supercardioid, or a hypercardioid microphone with a small diaphragm condenser may be a better choice. When I did my research last year, I looked around at several different options. I ended up with a $600 Audio-Technica AT4053B microphone, which is a hypercardioid small diaphragm condenser. It is kind of a mid-range microphone. It does relatively well. It's not what most of the pros are using, <laughs> but it is better than some of the entry-level microphones. But the question came again and again, are there less expensive alternatives for those of us that are just getting started and that don't necessarily have the budget for a microphone in that price range? And the answer is yes. I finally have uh, gotten around to looking at some and the Samson CO2 is one example of that type of microphone. Now, first of all, in terms of pickup pattern, it's somewhere between a cardioid and a super cardioid. So cardioid has a pickup pattern where it's most sensitive on the front. And then as you move off to the side of the microphone, the sensitivity falls off. And then when you get to the back of the microphone, it rejects almost everything. A super cardioid is very similar, except the pickup pattern is a little bit tighter on the front. And there is a little bit of pickup on the back. So you kind of sacrifice pickup on the back for a uh, tighter pickup on the front. And super cardioid is really kind of the, I think it's kind of a sweet spot in a lot of ways for indoor dialogue. And it's what a lot of the larger budget productions are using. Then of course there's hypercardioid, which is a little bit tighter pickup on the front, but it has a larger tail on the back than a super cardioid. They're all a little bit different, but the most common choices for indoor dialogue amongst the professionals, from my experience, is super cardioid microphones and hypercardioids. Now the Samson CO2, I'm not entirely sure what it is because <laughs> it says different things in different places. On the website, Samson says super cardioid. In the documentation that came with the microphone, it said cardioid. And on the mic itself, there's a little symbol that looks to me like a super cardioid pickup pattern, not a typical cardioid pickup pattern. So in, I guess the kind of the practical thing to keep in mind though is to my ear it sounds a little bit more like a super cardioid than a typical cardioid pickup pattern that is to say the pickup pattern is a little bit tighter on the front and it seems to do pretty well for indoor dialogue big feature on the samson co2 is its price tag for 110 dollars you get into a microphone that you can use quite effectively for indoor dialogue not only that but you get two of them for 110 dollars so <laughs> it's kind of like wow that is a very low price for two XLR-based microphones that you can use to record into recorders like a Tascam DR60D Mark II, which we've talked a lot about here, which is a very uh, relatively inexpensive recorder with XLR inputs. Now, when I saw the price and that it was two microphones, I was pretty skeptical, to be honest, that it would have very good sound quality, that the build quality would be good. Let's start talking through each of those. You're hearing the Samson CO2. This entire episode, all of my dialogue has been recorded with the Samson CO2 into a Zoom F8 audio recorder. And so this is kind of what you can expect if you're using a recorder along those lines and this microphone. In terms of build quality, the entire body of the microphone is metal, including the XLR jack on the bottom for the output. And I was actually kind of surprised. It seems as well built as lots of microphones that are much more expensive. It also comes with a rubberized shock clip, and that's actually kind of unique. A lot of times the microphones will just come with a microphone clip with no shock absorbing capability. This actually has a little bit of shock absorbing capability on it. It has sort of a rubber fitting that fits around the microphone body. So that was actually kind of a pleasant surprise. Also, this clip has the ability to connect to a 5 8 inch microphone stand or to a 3 8 inch boom. Now, this microphone is meant for going into an XLR input, a preamplifier. It's not really made for adapting to 3.5 millimeters. So if you're planning to adapt this to sit on top of your camera, probably not the best choice. You'll probably want to look at other microphones. And we've done a, lots of reviews of 3.5 millimeter camera top microphones that you'll probably want to take a look at instead. 
Now, one thing that Samsung did sacrifice in order to meet this price point is there's no high pass filter and there's no pad on this microphone. What that means, there's no high pass filter, so you can't engage a high pass filter on the microphone itself to cut out some of the low frequency rumble that you might get when you're handling a boom pole or when there's an air conditioner running or things of that nature. Not a huge deal. Most recorders can do that instead or you can apply that in post. And there's also no pad. A pad is something you engage when you're gonna record a very loud sound source and you need to attenuate the sensitivity of the microphone. Again, something that you just don't get on this microphone, not a huge deal if you're recording dialogue anyway, because typically you don't need a pad when you're recording dialogue. In terms of weight, it's only 170 grams, so it's nice and easy to operate a boom pole if you have it out on the end of a boom pole, or if you're mounting it on a mic stand, you don't have to worry a lot about the mic stand tipping over because it's not a very heavy mic. In terms of self noise, we did our typical practical noise floor test. Now, I realize this is not a scientific test. What we're measuring here is a section of silence for several seconds in the room in which I record. So there is some room tone, first of all, so it's capturing that. Plus it's capturing any self noise generated by the microphone itself, any noise that may be introduced on the cabling, which is probably not a lot, and then any noise that's generated by the preamplifier, the analog to digital converter within the recorder, in this case, the Zoom F8. The Zoom F8 actually has a very clean preamp, so there's not a lot being introduced there. And overall, that little test showed us that we were sitting at minus 61 dB when we normalized the audio to minus 23 LUFS, which is the European broadcast loudness standard for television. And uh, that's a respectable result. So is it the cleanest microphone in the world? Certainly not. Is it good enough? I think for a lot of people, especially if you're on a tight budget, it is good enough and it sounds pretty decent. Now, how does the microphone do in terms of handling noise? That's actually a factor to consider because if you're going to put it out on the end of a boom pole and operate it by hand, moving or cueing the boom between different actors or talent to capture their audio, it doesn't do the best with the included shock mount. Um, but if you get a proper shock mount, it'll do very well. I think actually the bigger issue is going to be the wind noise that you pick up if you're queuing very quickly between two different people. And that's typical for most microphones in this in, in any range, actually. So if you're going to queue really quickly, you probably need to have some sort of Zeppelin cover on there. The warranty for the Samson CO2 kit is two years, which is a, I think, a respectable warranty for a product with this price. And in terms of features that sort of make this microphone unique from others in its price range, certainly. First of all, you get two mics for this price of $110 US at the time of the review. That's pretty amazing in and of itself. It also comes with these rubberized shock mounts, which again, if you're gonna put those up on like just mic stands or something like that, more than enough. If you're gonna be doing some light cueing on a boom pole that you operate by hand, it's probably gonna be okay. If you're gonna do some really fast cueing, you're probably gonna to need to upgrade to a more sophisticated shock mount system. But again, nice that they included those. And then finally, it also does come with this hard plastic case with a foam uh, insert, which makes it very easy to transport the microphones as well. Kind of a nice touch. So overall, this microphone kit seems like a very good buy for those that are working on a tight budget that want to move into a boom microphone for indoor dialogue. We'll be recording with a recorder like, say for example, a Zoom H5, a Zoom H6, a Tascam DR60D Mark II, DR70D. Really great price for a microphone that has a really respectable um, overall sound and a good feature set. So. Definitely something to consider, again, if you're if you're working on that tight budget. I hope you found this helpful. We will also be comparing this mic in the next few weeks to a number of other slightly more expensive microphones that you would use for potentially indoor dialogue recording, including the Audix SCX-1HC, the AKG Blue Line. Uh, we'll also throw it up against the Audio-Technica 4053B, which we've talked about in the past. And also just for reference and interest, we'll put up a Rode NT5. So you can hear what all those sound like relative to each other and show you what it sounds like across a few different price points, just to give you some reference points. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you get subscribed so you can catch that video here in the next few weeks. Thanks for checking out this episode and we'll talk to you again soon.